What's up everybody, Indian of Oklahoma City, as you can see ahead of me, and once again, a brand new bike review. By request, the Chieftain Dark Horse 2020 model. Actually, it's funny enough, I've done all the other ones that have come with the 116, except for the Chieftain. Kind of forgot to do that. It's funny, I've rode the Chieftains with 116 kits on them. They never seem to end up on the channel because I always run out of battery or something weird goes on. But this is the 2020 Chieftain Dark Horse in all of its blacked out ruby smoke glory. Beautiful looking bike. I love the way that looks. Of course, it's the complete polar opposite to my Chieftain Limited, which is the chromed out version. Nice deep saddlebags, as you'll see there. has a little storage compartment on the inner fairing there. Now 2020 is the upgrade in the rider command functionality. So whenever you come up on here, we'll go ahead and we'll activate everything here for the rider command and that way we'll go through all the functions while it's loading. Analog speedometer, analog tachometer, fuel, uh, your cruise control, left turn signal, bright, fuel, side stand. You can change to kilometers an hour if you need to. Of course, your gear counters on this side. Of course, there's neutral indication. You do have general maintenance warning. You do have um, service engine, right turn signal, battery, oil, and you do have your TPMS system. So uh, when you look at this, there's two ways to scroll. You can go by, or three ways to scroll, really. You can go by dragging your finger across like you would your favorite smart device. You can hit these physical buttons here. As you will see, you can add devices, change music. I do not listen to country. That was just set. Speakers on these things are really good. It's a 100 watt system. And uh, when you turn it on, you can be listening at speed 70 miles an hour, 80 miles an hour. And you can hear it just fine at two or three. I mean, it don't take much at all. But like I said, you can see I can scroll it either way with gloves on or not. And then, of course, you do have your tour mode, your sport mode, and your standard. I love sport mode. I'm going to put it into sport mode. And it actually stays put whenever you do it. Over here, you do have the trigger on the back. And you can scroll it that way as well. And you can see the different screens coming up. Of course, you have your current ride features, voltage, tire pressure monitoring. You can see the uh, radio there. And you can clear your computer for new rides. This one, of course, has the newer screen where you can sit there and add your layers. You can see traffic is turned on. You can turn on weather. No reason to. <laughs> um, so you can see the traffic conditions and all that. The one disadvantage to the new ride command is that after two years, you do have to have a subscription to continue the service because it is a cellular-based service, and that's where it gets all the information from is from those systems and of course now the new ride command can come with apple carplay uh, at this time so you can upgrade to that of course you got your big deal there there's your power bags cruise control windshield engine cutoff switch main power like i said it's got that um paddle on the back that can scroll through ride command horn bright flash to pass push self-canceling turn signals from a stop if you're in a motion it does eventually cancel itself and of course this is how you control your volume your next button pause all that fun stuff if you have communications and i do have a communicator on the side of my helmet if it's paired you can tell it to communicate as well you can stop to communicate and of course you do have a button there and i'll show you what that does it's kind of hard if you don't have a like a music something plugged into it but this list this listing here allows you to scroll through um, you know, your functions on your actual navigation screen and everything. So when it comes up, you'll see that it loads navigation. And this is actually how you can go through and, and change that uh, screen up and scroll down and do all that as well. So when it comes up, and it does take a while for the this one to come up because it's loading, like I said, through a cell network. There we go. So you see as I press it, it will zoom it out, zoom it in. To select some things while you're on the road, there's another paddle on the back, and you can press on that back paddle, and you can scroll using your different functions over here. So you can 
choose, see that switch again, is how you control these. So you can go through and select through this well and also through the back switch back there. Your back button is the left one once you go in there. So it starts it, this scrolls it, this backs it, this selects it, this selects it, and then you can scroll around and make it work. So there's quite a bit of functionality there. Now I know a lot of you guys know I used to work for Harley and there's a lot of Harley naysayers out there. It's like, this is still an expensive bike. Yes, it is. I agree. It is an expensive bike, but Street Glide doesn't have a power windshield. Street Glide, unless you buy the CVO, that's $40,000 option basically to get just the power bags. Another big deal, guys, if, if you could just put the angled uh, you know, <laughs> valve stem on there on all bikes, that'd just be wonderful. But these bikes come with it on both front and back. That's another $40,000 option on a Harley. Only CVOs have that unless you buy it and put it on there. Only CP CVOs have tire pressure monitoring systems. Well, this one comes with it. Yes, this bike starts around 28 grand, but it does have all that. Now, I know I own a um, an Indian Limited, which is about the same price. I didn't pay that much for it. It's called I waited till the end of the year to get the deal. And that's another advantage to get an, in an Indian is that Polaris does actually mark them down, something that Harley just simply does not. They refuse to to work with you, basically. You're paying full price or you're not getting a Harley. That's how they treat it. But I mean, the fit and finish and everything is fantastic on these motorcycles. I don't work for Indian Oklahoma City. I don't work for Indian. I just really love their motorcycles. I really, I mean, after riding them and riding them and watching them progress so quickly, I mean, if you remember the older ones, they didn't have the ride command. It was just a a central uh, LCD screen, little red screen. And uh, that quickly became the ride command. And then it still had that big block over here that was a <laughs> kind of a plus switch and rubberized buttons. And I complained about that. And then they quickly adapted to this. I mean, that's the thing. Polaris has been adaptable. And that's what makes these bikes really good. So let's go ahead and take this one for a ride. See how the 116 does. All right, so this bike is new, only 51 miles on it currently. I will say, oh, I already missed my hilltoe shifter. Oh, I hate plastic in the road. I don't want it to get caught on the exhaust because you don't want plastic on your hot exhaust. It's almost hard and impossible to get off. There we go. I mean, the one thing about these Chieftains is they only weigh in the lower 800s, shockingly, but they're very well balanced. Um, you'll see I'm landed one foot here and just standing right upright. This bike is really easy to hold. We got a pretty good amount of wind coming from our right side right now, and I'm able to hold it just fine. Now you'll see it's 88 degrees at this time. We are climbing in temperature, so we're gonna get a good, pretty decent hot weather ride out of this one today. But I will say that there are some things I miss, and this is every touring bike right now that's coming up with this problem, is I miss the hilltoe shifter. I, I'm a big proponent of hilltoe shifters on a, on a bike that has four boards. It's just, it's just better to handle those, you know, with the hilltoe shifter because you have more leverage over that versus not having one where you have to lift your foot up on the floorboard to, to shift. So I prefer the method of hilltoe for sure. on a floorboard bike. Ah, oh, that familiar compression braking, something that the Thunderstroke is really good at. And I do use it quite a bit. In fact, I'll go over my own Chieftain uh, 111 Limited 19, 2019 model here and go into detail on it because I've got well over 3,000 miles on it now. And we'll talk about it. All right. So as you'll see, 60 miles an hour comes very easily to these motorcycles. We're in fifth gear currently. Fifth gear at 26, 2700 RPM roughly at 60 miles an hour. So this bike purrs right along. This 116, 
in its power band is phenomenal. Go ahead and get it back up to, I almost jumped to 75, almost 80 there. So I'm in sixth gear now, we're at 70. So you're at main highway speed and you're looking at around 2,600 RPM again. But like I said, this time I'm in sixth gear at 70. This bike does not rotate whatsoever. And our red line today is around 5,100 RPM. Now I will say something, but being a little bit taller person, I'm six foot tall, 32 inch inseam. I do kind of wish that the, the bike had a little bit more stretch to it, just a little bit. Um, right now with the floorboards in stock position, everything, you'll see my knees come slightly above the tank right there. And that's with my feet flat like that. If I push them forward, you can see that just that little bit of stretch will put my knees in a little bit more comfortable position. But to be honest, you can move around quite a bit on these floorboards. They're very large. There's a lot of real estate there. I have size 14 feet, so I still have room to move. So that means you can kind of get yourself in a nice comfortable position for a long range ride on this machine, even if you are a little bit taller. Of course, you can put highway pegs out there too. There's a lot of different things you can do with a motorcycle like this, especially when you already have the highway bar and everything attached. And these full fairing bikes do a great job of that. Now the 116 is just purring right along and it does not pull as hard as, uh, or it doesn't rotate as hard or as much as my 111 does. That is for sure. Doing 55 miles an hour, barely doing 2000 RPM in sixth gear. But it doesn't feel bogged doing it either. So it does have a pretty wide range on the RPM without feeling bogged. Of course, you'll see that new screen going right there. You'll see it tracing right there. I could change the color out uh, if I need to, change it to the white background or something for high visibility. This is just something that came up uh, from inside the showroom. So I'm not too worried about it. I'm not gonna play with it too, too much. One thing I did forget to mention on this big screen here is that there's it's got all these split screen options and what you probably can't see because it's uh, buried in there. There's a little uh, cog right here for setting. You can actually tap on that and you can put a new widget on the map or, or map a new widget to it uh, anytime. I mean, you can see right there that I've got battery, compass, fuel, and even right now the widgets are actually moving. They're actually live while we're going and I could select a new widget. There's quite a bit of them on here. Of course, right now I'm moving. It's gonna be a little bit delayed. There it goes. So you can see the Apple CarPlay, the home link, fuel economy, trip meter, all that has come up. And you could drag these widgets to and from and change out your screen. You can actually customize the way the screen looks, which is really cool. There's a lot of information that this ride command does. There's simply no other company's infotainment system does. And the old one was pretty cool too. It could do that as well. But this one has it more in this stacked formation over on this side next to the Navi. And you could do it on almost every screen uh, that you go through. Like I said, I'm scrolling with this uh, left uh, paddle over here. So you'll see that one. I can add more widgets to this screen as well. It just gives me the bike's information right there live and wide. And these, uh, you can see tire pressures are going up. It did come out of a cold showroom. So it did have a little bit low tire pressure in the front. And it's coming up quite steadily and it should be caught up here momentarily. So I'm not too, too, too worried about it. But yeah, you can see the current ride. You can see my elevation changes and everything. I, I mean, there's a lot of information here that you don't necessarily need, but it is a very cool amount of information. It's just something you just don't see from anybody else. Now, right now, this is of course a big nasty construction zone and we know that this road is terrifying and the suspension on these bikes are marvelous. Yes, for the 2018 model year, they took a little bit of the suspension travel out of the Fox suspension, but that air shock is still fantastic. To access the air shock on the left side here, you pull that left cover off and it's got the valve stem right there. And also on that inner left cover has the amount of air required for your different passenger and weight settings and everything. So it does have that all in one deal. And you can see I was in sixth gear and pulled out just fine. I didn't really push it at all. I'm in sport mode. And uh, of course it makes the throttle more one-to-one. -one. It's a very good feeling bike. And I don't ever take them out of sport mode. I know what rain mode and stuff does. It's just one of those things where it just changes the throttle position and where it's going to react. And even in, even in heavy weather, I rode this bike without any issue or rode the 111 version of it that I have without any issue. You can, you can modulate the throttle very well on these machines and it just handles it really well. 
but I have to say that the 116, it just has power in much deeper levels. It, it has 126 foot pound of torque, which versus the regular 111, it's just a little bit more of its 119 and the 111. So the 116 comes a little bit more torque and you can feel it, it's more, it's more broad. It's definitely deeper in the rev range. When you pull it, you can definitely feel that bike start to rumble. Now visibility out of the mirrors are really good. I know I look back, that's just something you wanna make sure that your blind spot's absolutely checked for whenever you're going into things because you don't wanna slam into that car you didn't know was there. Like I said, the suspension on this thing is just so relaxed and fantastic. Now I have to say, I like the original seats uh, that came on the uh, Chieftains before this model. The new gunner seat, I, I, I wish there was a little bit more padding for longer range riding. Of course, when it comes to any stock seat, there's a pretty good possibility it's going to need a little bit more. Yeah, boy. Now, despite this being a massive bagger, this bike is a very good all-arounder. It is a shock how good of an all-arounder this machine is. Chieftains are, like I said, they're 800 and something pounds, but they just simply don't feel like it unless you're trying to manually push the bike. If you're off the bike, walking it, or if you're on the bike, walking it. That's the only time you really start to feel the weight on these machines. When they're upright and you're under power, the, the weight simply melts away on these machines. You can see that wind is probably a good 28 miles an hour to my right side, gusting the 30s right now. We have really good wind. And you can see this bike is just going straight through and it's slicing right through. In Oklahoma, we deal with wind every single day. We get these big open spots and usually get that huge blast. You can see I countered for it, but it didn't happen. This bike simply usually doesn't need that kind of counter steer to get into the wind because it just goes right through the weight and everything and the way it's designed slices really well through the wind. Now the regular braking on this bike is fantastic. Whenever you grab it, it's got twin massive rotors at front, single in the rear, but it does very well at coming to a halt for its big size. So super good braking, but you'll notice that I will use a lot more compression braking on this machine than I will the actual main braking, and that's because the compression braking is so good uh, all I do is basically just lightly touch the rear brake so I can have lights and slow down using mostly that and then that, for the very final step put on the, the braking because you simply don't need as much braking force as this bike actually produces in all sorts of categories. So it's pretty shocking. It's really well done. Now, like I said, the fit and finish and everything is fantastic on this bike. Going over these harsh bumps and these harsh roads Notice that the mirrors are very stable and everything like that. I have a lot of praise for this machine. Do I wish it was a little bit cheaper and more accessible to the masses? Yes, I do. There is a base version of the Chieftain, which you can get with the 116, believe it or not. It starts at 21999 If you get the 116, it's a little bit more. It's around 22 and a half. But I kind of wish that the, all, the, all the technologies and all the goodies can work its way down in price. And I understand that at this time, the market is feeding the price. I mean, th these things are selling not too bad at all. And I, I, like I said, I kind of wish that we'd have a little bit difference, but still, if you can find one of these, is it worth the price? To be honest, if you're replacing your pickup truck and you're replacing your car or whatever you might be doing with it, and you're taking this thing out on an adventure, the experience that you're purchasing does actually make it worth the price. In a sense, I mean, if that's if that's what you're looking for, if you're looking for the experience, if you're looking to get away from it all, there's no better place to do it from than the back of a motorcycle. And this is one of the finest motorcycles to do it with. Like I said, it's comfortable. Uh, the seat does need a little bit of work. After about three and a half, four hours, you're gonna wanna stretch out on it. So it's not an all day comfort riding bike. Uh, you do need to stretch out every three to four hours, but your gas tank is gonna be every three to four hours as well. 
And uh, I mean, the 116, I can't speak for it. I know I'm getting into the 45, 46 miles per gallon range on the highway. Uh, so the 116 would probably not be too far behind that, if not around the same. If not even a little bit better because it doesn't have to work as hard too. But man, this bike, it's just a fantastic ride. And the 116, <laughs> this puts a grin on my face. There's plenty of grunt, plenty of power in the 116. That's one thing I look forward to doing on mine is getting a 116 kit. Since there's nobody behind me, I'll just do my typical braking. You'll see this thing is coming down just fine, just with compression braking. There we go, right at the end. I'll finish it off. If you guys see that little thing right there, starting in 2017, 2018, they started deactivating the rear cylinder for a parade mode, kind of similar to Harley Davidson's Milwaukee 8 and uh, some of the later twin cam models. I'm talking about the heat. We're up to 94 now. We're still climbing. To be honest, I don't, I mean, this is a big air-cooled engine. This is a, a, you know, over 1800 cc. Getting close to 1900, to be honest. And I don't feel any heat coming off of it at all, especially in motion. At stop, the way I settle down, I don't really get any heat on any major components. It's usually on my leg and I usually just kick it out. You'll see, I've got it kicked out there to kind of ward off the heat. So the earlier Indians were much hotter than this. The Thunderstroke has improved so much in terms of how much heat it produces now that this is this is where it's at this is much better so if you're thinking about long range touring and you're worried about heat from a big air cooled engine this one simply seems to handle it just fine um, I've been over 100 degrees in these things too are on these things and I'd usually have very good airflow even at that range in long range rides. But you'll see this thing is just comfortably burbling right along, holds with traffic just fine. These bikes hilariously have a top speed of around 110 or 11 because they're electronically limited. They're shut off at that point. They just simply won't go any faster. And uh, I find that a little bit funny. I, I, I don't know why. I guess you just don't need to go faster than that. <laughs> All right, nobody's behind me. Let's make sure nobody cuts in front of me. All right, to our massive suspension test here. All right, like I said, I'm going to hit this big bump that goes internal. Boom, nothing. Big bump, nothing. <laughs> Yeah, it climbs over it, but it doesn't throw you off the seat. The suspension really well settled and really well placed. Like I said, you can see me catch right up to these guys already on the interstate. I know it's a construction zone, so we're going a little bit slower, but it doesn't take much to twitch this throttle and get going once again. Guys, the Chieftain is fantastic bagger. The 116 it is a fantastic engine. Is it as powerful as its Challenger brother? No, not at all. But it's such an easy going and potent machine in its own right. It's a fantastic riding machine. I will say because my wife has rode enough on these that the power is amazing with, uh, with a passenger. However, the passenger area does need a little bit of work and she complains she wants a backrest. So just know that if you buy one of these and you do plan on carrying a passenger, maybe upgrade the seat and also pick up a backrest for them so that they'll be happier. But overall, guys, the Chieftain, like I said, it's such a good, well-rounded bike. A seat for all-day comfort would be the most perfect thing for it. A hill-toe shifter would add that much, that, that little bit more to it. It's just a bike that's so good all around. It's a great commuter bike. I love taking this thing into town because it's so lightweight for such a big bike. It's, it's great to go into town. It's great to pick up stuff. It's great to do things with. And it, it's just a, overall one of the best all-around motorcycles I ever rode. 
And I kind of wish I had the 116 power now. <laughs> so at any rate, this is the Rabbit Hedgehog. And uh, once again, I responded to a commenter that wanted me to take out the Chieftain Dark Horse with the 116 because I actually hadn't done it yet. I'd done all the other ones. I forgot to do this one. So here's my chance to do it. Once again, thanks to Indian of Oklahoma City for the new bike to ride around on. I'm going to take it back to him now in one piece and uh, hopefully one of you guys will come pick it up from him. Tell him Rabbit Hedgehog sent you. And once again, I don't work for him. I don't work for Indian. I'm not paid by any manufacturer or anything like that. I want to say a special thank you once again to AGV Sport USA for the riding gear you see today. The 130 flannel, also known as James in the color pattern in the blue. The Mercury gloves in blue. And the Metro jeans by AGV Sport USA ballistic materials, all the slide protection you can ask for, keeping your butt covered since 1985. Thank you once again for supplying our team with lovely gear to keep us safe and comfortable while riding. At any rate, folks, keep that shiny side up. Hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, hit that subscribe button, smash that notification bell, and that way whenever a new video comes up, you see that it's there. Keep that shiny side up, folks, and we'll catch you on the next ride. What's up, everybody? This is the Rabbit Hedgehog. We once again want to thank you for watching our videos. Please like, share, subscribe today, and if you like what you see, mash that notification button so that way you get our latest videos and notifications live and on the spot. We also want to thank our dealership partners, Indian of Oklahoma City, House of Kawasaki, and Motive Cycle Works Moto Guzzi, who is also our motorcycle mechanic. We want to thank them for allowing us to ride their rides. We are not paid in by any way by any manufacturer or dealer. We just get to be mad men and women with opinions. We also want to reach out to our sponsors and thank them. We have Law Tigers Motorcycle Lawyers. These motorcycle lawyers are mostly nationwide and can be reached 24-7 at lawtigers.com or 1-888-888. 868-0208. We also want to thank our newest sponsor for gear and the things that you see us wearing, AGV Sport USA. They are out of agvsportusa.com in Flower Mound, Texas. We also want to thank Doug Crawford and AMS Oil for protecting our machines with the latest in lubrication technologies. He can be found at usasynthetics.com or 405-388-6170. And also for Derek in and Associates Insurance Company. He can be found at 405-261-1010. Once again, everybody keep that shiny side up and we'll catch you on the next ride.